Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Today we continue our study of Mark chapter 14. We're in verses 27 through 31, which reads, You will all fall away, Jesus told them. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows, twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. That's Mark chapter 14, verses 27 through 31. Today we return to our study of Mark 14, where the Lord Jesus has just enjoyed his last Passover meal with his disciples in the upper room. At this point in the narrative, the Lord Jesus and his disciples have left the upper room and walked to the Mount of Olives. They are now in the Garden of Gethsemane. Human history began in a garden, in the Garden of Eden. Human sin and failure began in that garden. And in a wonderful twist, human history will culminate in the Garden of the New Jerusalem. In the Garden of Eden, Adam was overcome by sin, while in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Lord Jesus overcame sin. In the Garden of Eden, Adam ran from God, while in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Lord Jesus embraced the Father's will in order to present himself to the Father on the behalf of sinful man. In verses 27 and 28 of today's passage, we read, You will all fall away, Jesus told them. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. During the Passover meal, the Lord Jesus told his disciples one of them would betray him. Then after the meal, while on the Mount of Olives, he told the remaining eleven that all of them would fall away and abandon him. They didn't understand it at the time. But the disciples were being introduced to the only success that endures, the success of the Lord Jesus on their behalf. In Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 7, we read about this prophesied event. Zechariah prophesied the Lord Jesus would be struck and the disciples would be scattered. The Lord Jesus knew the disciples had not grasped this fact. Their failure was central to the formation of their walk with him, though. We should never be surprised that God strategically uses our weaknesses in the formation of our spiritual development. God does not delight in our sufferings. He delights in using them to bring us to that place that we fully trust him. In verse 29 of today's passage, we read, Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Peter, the spokesperson for the disciples, always listed first in the list of the apostles, for the second time resisted the plan of God. I'm sure he thought he was being spiritual, but he knew nothing of the strength of the flesh. Peter thought spiritual maturity was something he produced. Before, when the Lord Jesus had predicted his death and resurrection, Peter rebuked him. Now here, in today's passage, when the Lord Jesus predicted the failure of all the disciples, Peter declared that he was different than the rest. But as we know, Peter not only abandoned the Lord Jesus, he also disowned him three times. In verses 30 and 31 of today's passage, we read, Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows, twice you yourself will disown me three times. 
But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Like you and me, Peter believed in the Lord Jesus as the Christ, but he didn't understand all of what the Lord Jesus was teaching. Like Peter, despite the fact that we fail, the Lord Jesus is yet at work in our lives using all things together to bring about his design in and through our lives. God looks at failure differently than we. And like Peter, we've all professed dogged allegiance to the Lord in moments of confidence in self. We forget that self is our biggest enemy. And like sheep, we all have been known to fail miserably. In fact, God expects more failure from us than we expect from ourselves. Through it all, the Lord Jesus refines us and teaches us that our failure isn't final. In fact, he takes our failure and forms us by showing us that our failure is a part of our healing. The healing comes on the heels of being forced to run to the Lord when we have exhausted all of our resources. Following the Lord through our failures teaches us to listen to him and to trust and to depend upon him more fully. It is quite notable that in his last night with the disciples, the Lord Jesus gave the disciples a meal and an enduring object lesson to impress upon them the reality of what he was doing. His words that night were powerful, but if detached from the meal and the object lesson, we're not left with much. God is not the God of second chances. He's the God who is greater than all of our attempts to accomplish anything on our own. And as John MacArthur says, the road to spiritual maturity is paved with an ever-increasing understanding of our wickedness. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungminister at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.